Hello, insiders. This is Todd, and we're back with some more information for creators. Today, we're going to be talking about branded content, and I've invited Henry here. Henry, you want to introduce yourself? Hey, how's it going? Um, I'm Henry. I'm a product manager here on Famebit, which is YouTube's in-house branded content platform. So what's been going on with branded content on YouTube? Cool. So firstly, I think branded content uh, on YouTube is, you know, it's, it's huge. So what we're trying to do in the branded content industry is kind of facilitate those connections. Uh, and it's really important for creators, you know, it drives a lot of revenue into the ecosystem so the creators can fund their content. And it's really important for brands so they can find an audience for their products. Uh, it's not without some challenges. Uh, it's tough if you're a creator, it can be hard to find deals. And then once you've found a deal, it's hard to know how to price yourself. It's hard to know how much creative freedom you can have with your content. And as an advertiser, it's hard to measure the impact of your campaign. You're beyond views, there's not a lot of data available. So what we're trying to do in Famebit is try and solve a few of those problems. So how is Famebit helping uh, creators and advertisers solve these problems? Yeah, sure. So I think we think about it in, um, in a couple of different ways. So what we're really trying to do is bring the best of Google and YouTube technology to the branded content industry. We think of this in products in three different groups. So we've got things for creators, for advertisers, and obviously for viewers. So as we're on Creator Insider, let's jump into to the creator side. So a lot of companies in this space have small rosters of creators. Um, and we're really proud of what we're trying to do in democratizing access to branded content. Um, so we'll actually pitch any creator in the whole ecosystem. Uh, if we think they're a great fit for a, a brand's campaign, uh, we can pitch them. And so when a brand comes to us and they want to run a campaign, we're not just looking, OK, is this channel a good fit for the brand? And obviously, that's important. We're actually trying to look through to the audience of that channel. And we want to line it up so that the, you know, the group that the brand is trying to sell to is the same group that's watching the audience of these creators. And that, that gives us the power to curate any creator who's on YouTube rather than having to pick, stick to a, a, you know, a smaller roster. Um, and it also means that the, you know, the content is going to land better with the audience who are actually interested in, in the product that's being talked about. We're also building tools to try and broaden access to as many creators as possible. Uh, we launched something uh, recently for an onboarding flow. So if you go to New Studio, uh, you'll see a Famebit tab in the monetization hub. And if you're an eligible creator, in a few clicks, you can get signed up. You can become a Famebit creator. So there are a couple of things we've been doing for creators. So how about for brands? What's what's new for brands with Famebit? And why, why would a brand even want to use Famebit as opposed to just going directly to creators? So the, the biggest reason that we see is that historically in branded content, there's been very little measurement available. So if you're a brand and you work with some creators through an agency directly, an MCN, whatever, uh, there's often not a lot of data available to know how did that video perform. And that really contrasts with other digital ad formats. If you buy pretty much any other digital ad format, you're going to know how it performed, how many people clicked it, how many people went and purchased. And in branded content, it's just not the case. So what we're doing at Famebit is trying to bring all of the ads measurement tools that Google and YouTube have made over the last 10, 15 years and apply them to branded content for the first time. Uh, and this lets brands measure the ROI of their campaigns so they know actually how did it impact the audience. And they often these videos perform really well. And so it's very powerful to show brands this positive performance that they haven't been able to see before. And then it makes them want to come back, you know, spend more money in the ecosystem, drive more revenue to creators. So how we're specifically doing that is, um, is a couple of tools. Um, one is what we call brand influence lift, which measures increased searches from people who watch the videos. Um, another uses the surveys that you often see across YouTube. Uh, and so that's, that's what we call influencer lift. Uh, so if you watch the video and you, you, know, you answer those surveys with higher awareness or perception of the brand, it's again another positive signal. And we have organic view through conversions as well. And so that lets you as an advertiser see how many people actually checked out your website or even bought your product. And they're all really important so that you know, you know what was the performance of this campaign and did it change people's behavior or not. So you mentioned that viewers um, were also a key aspect of branded content. So you could tell us a little bit about what viewers might notice about uh, what you're doing. I think the biggest thing is we're trying to build new formats. So the viewing experience of this branded content is kind of uh, as powerful as it can be. Um, so what you might have seen in the wild is branded content videos uh, from Famebit that have a shelf below the player. And that shelf will feature products that the creator's talking about. Uh, so you'll be there and the creator's talking about some product. On this shelf, you'll be able to see the product with a price and a retailer, and it's easy to click through and check it out. We have the same thing for apps. And my favorite is this augmented reality beauty try-on shelf. Uh, so this is where if you're watching a beauty video, you can click a try-on button. And with permission, it'll open your front-facing camera 
you can try on the lipstick or the mascara or whatever it is and check out the color and see if it's a good fit for your face or not. So tell me about the different uh, service models that Famebit uses. So Famebit has two service models uh, that we run. Uh, so we have the self-service platform, which is what came through the acquisition of Famebit several years ago. Uh, that's at famebit.com. And that's where brands and creators work directly with each other without much involvement from YouTube. We also have Famebit full service. And so that's a fully managed experience where brands and creators, we, you know, we do the project management, we coordinate everything, find the creators. Uh, and this is where all those technologies that I mentioned uh, are kind of coming to life. At the moment, the, the total payout to, to each creator from full service is now 30 times the size of the self-service business. So the self-service platform is not performing so well. Um, and that's because Famebit self-survey came to this acquisition, so it's built on a different technical stack. And that means all of these technologies and tools that we've made, they can't integrate with it. It's kind of on its own, doesn't connect to YouTube. And so without a lot of these technologies uh, and just kind of with a different model, it hasn't performed as well over the years. And creators have flocked over to full service and brands have flocked over to full service, while self-service hasn't flourished so much. And at the moment, only 4% of Famebit payouts come from the self-service platform. So 96% of creator earnings come from full serve. And so for that reason, uh, this week, we're announcing that we're gonna be deprecating the Famebit self-serve platform uh, and shutting it down so that we can focus our efforts on making full service uh, as successful as it can be. Can you tell us a little bit about like what, what this means for creators? Yeah, of course. Um, so I think the first thing to mention is that we're gonna be phasing the shutdown over several months so that we reduce any impact to ongoing campaigns. So how this is gonna work um, is that now, as we announced just a couple of days ago, uh, we've already blocked new signups. So it's only existing users, both brands and creators who can log in. So in a, a couple of weeks, uh, we're gonna be blocking brands from posting new campaigns. And a couple of weeks after that, we're gonna be blocking creators from submitting proposals to those campaigns. So at that point, it's only existing campaigns, only pre-hired creators. And then we're gonna wait two months for all those campaigns to finish and close out now, at that point, we'll fully block login to the platform. If you want to see the full timeline for this, with the specific details and dates, you can click the, the Help Center article, which is going to be in, in the description. We want to help make this as, you know, have as little impact on creators as possible. And so to reduce that impact, we're going to be making a one-time payment to every creator who's earned any money on the platform in the three months prior to this, this sunsetting announcement. So if you completed one campaign for $100 in that three-month window, we're gonna match that $100 with another $100 payment. If you completed three campaigns, each for $200, let's say, you already earned $600, and we're gonna be making a payment for another $600 to try and reduce some of this impact to you. So if I'm a creator who's uh, only ever used the self-service option and I've never used the full service, uh, am I gonna be eligible to use the full service? Is there any, any uh, special criteria for that? Yeah, so it's a great question. Uh, so there are different eligibility requirements. Um, and you, the easiest way to find out is to go to the new YouTube studio, look for Famebit as a tab in the monetization hub. And if it's there and you can sign up, then that means you're eligible. Uh, the biggest change is probably the, the sub requirement is 25,000 subscribers for full service business. So it is a, a little bit higher than the, the self-service platform. There's also uh, people could use the self-service platform without having YouTube accounts. And now we're using full service. Everyone needs to have a YouTube account because we primarily go through YouTube. Um, so there are a couple of changes and we understand that's challenging for some creators and that's why we want to reduce the impact by having these payments so anyone who made you know any revenue in the last three months is going to be getting this additional payment to try and reduce some of that impact. Got it. So can you tell us uh, some stories maybe about some creators that are really uh, having success through using uh, the platform these days? Yeah, of course. So some creators who've had a lot of success on our full service business um, I guess a couple of my favorites, one was the, the Hershey's Hot Cocoa Kisses campaign. Um, and I think it really nicely highlighted the power of you know, creative freedom that you can give to a creator. So this was a campaign with, specifically with Hershey's uh, and it created the icing artist. I actually did a baking challenge and made like the most incredible cake I've ever seen. Uh, so we'll definitely check that one out. Um, another is, uh, was a Calvin Klein campaign uh, and it was created Shalom Black and Tara Kali. And they spoke about really personal, really powerful issues. I think they won a Streamy Award for, for, for the videos. I think it really shows the power the branded content can have. If, if I'm a creator and I want to uh, learn more about Famebit, maybe get started uh, with it, what should we do? Yeah, so the, um, the biggest thing is go to YouTube Studio, uh, check out that Famebit tab, and get yourself signed up. 
Uh, it's a really lightweight onboarding flow and that gets you contracted and it makes it really easy for us to include you in FameBet campaigns in the future. That's definitely the biggest thing. Um, I'd also suggest you check out uh, the FameBet Help Center article if you want to understand any more about the, the self-service platform uh, and you know, the, the sunsetting and what that means for you and your channel. Um, and finally, there's, there's a lot more to come here. So please watch the space. Uh, we're working on a lot of new stuff and hope we'll be back on, uh, on Insider soon. Great. Well, thanks for all that information. So if you're interested in FameBit, check out the links below. And we'll catch you next time. Until then, keep it real. Thank you.